What's up, YouTube? What's going on, guys? Uh, excuse the glare. I tried to like jimmy rig this and set it up. It's really hard to set up a whiteboard in your house and film. You'd be really shocked how difficult it is with lighting and stuff. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about um, training frequency and trying to find out what the best training frequency is for you uh, because it's not a one size fit all kind of answer. And I also want to talk about recovery, uh, fatigue, and understanding those a little bit more in depth. Uh, it seems like my last video stirred up a lot of questions on that, and I really want to talk about that. Um, there seems to be like growing paradigms. There, there seems to be like trends in the fitness industry right now where certain people train with really high frequency, kind of like I've ran a couple stints of what's called the Bulgarian method, where you actually build up to a maximal squat, um, you know, seven times a week. So like every single training day, you build up to a, almost a one rep max. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that, but you do that seven days a week. Some people even do it twice a day. So they accumulate 14 singles on squats throughout a week. And uh, I actually had a lot of success with it. It's not a magical program. There's reasons why that program works. And there's also reasons why some people do it and probably lose strength. And uh, it all comes down to understanding fatigue, recovery, and the way the body works. Uh, and we also want to, I want to give you guys in-depth explanation on like how you can figure out for yourself what the optimal training frequency is for you. I've trained as little as one time per week on the main lifts uh, and muscle groups, and I've also trained as much as training a lift seven days a week, and I've done everything in between. And over the years, I've really figured out how to periodize my frequency and, and figure out what's best at any given moment for a trainee. So we're going to get into that today. Now, before we even get into this stuff, guys, you have to understand what fatigue recovery these things are. And the reason why I started this video is because on my last video, I got a comment about someone who noticed that I have some clients bench two days uh, in a row. And they're wondering how that can work when everything they've learned in school and through books said that a, a muscle can be only trained every 24 to 48 hours. There needs to be that, that window of time so that muscle can recover before you touch it again. And uh, they had actually mentioned they had had success with higher frequency training themselves and they couldn't understand why when it went against everything they learned. And so to explain that, I have to explain fatigue and how it works. And I think people uh, very misunderstand fatigue uh, and recovery. We're going to get into recovery down here in a second. But when you view fatigue, you have to view it as more of a debt than an on and off switch. And what I mean by that is fatigue is kind of like a debt you incur with money. So if you were to train a muscle group and stress it out, there is a certain amount of fatigue debt you get from that. And if you were to do it again the very next day, your debt grows larger. Recovery is kind of when you deposit money into that bank to get rid of that debt. Okay, so if you have that fatigue debt and it's grown pretty large, but then you do some recovery, you take a couple days off training, uh, maybe do other recovery methods and all of a sudden that fatigue debt gets uh, alleviated a little bit and that's how you want to view fatigue You don't want to view it as an on and off switch It's not as simple as just saying oh I stress out a muscle group or my nervous system or whatever uh, people say and Now I, I can't train anymore until it's recovered You want to view it as a debt and when you understand this you'll understand how to program and getting into recovery, like what is recovery, the reason why we can't view it as an on and off switch is because recovery is really complicated. You have things like your central nervous system, which recovers at a different rate than the muscular system, which recovers at a different rate than the joints, tendons, and ligaments, which recover at a different rate than your immune system, uh, your endo. Like there's all these different systems in the body that get um, changed from our fatigue. And they all recover at different rates. And you, you, to be honest, no one really knows what the set time frame of all these are, especially in highly trained powerlifters and stuff. There just isn't enough literature to fully understand this yet. But what we do know as coaches is that these things all get stressed out at different rates. They all recover at different rates. Um, we know for a fact that the tendons, the joints, the ligaments, all those things uh, adapt far slower than our muscular system, the central nervous system. Those things adapt much quicker and therefore there is a different uh, recovery time frame on those. Now with that understood, we can kind of get into the semantics now of higher frequency training and lower frequency training and if there are benefits to it, drawbacks, what they are and, and really understanding how to select your frequency of training. What you have to understand is basically the more frequent we train, the more we stress out these things down here um, in a general sense. So usually speaking, when we increase frequency, we're doing it to increase volume. However, what we do know from the scientific literature, if volume is equated, meaning the amount
amount of sets, reps, and weight we do in a given training week, when that is equated, there actually isn't a much, uh, there isn't much difference to higher frequency training compared to lower frequency training when we're talking about small changes. Maybe talking about training two times a week compared to three times a week. Now, I know someone's going to mention the uh, Norwegian Frequency Project, and they're going to mention certain literature that shows there is a benefit from higher frequency training, but I can show you literature that shows there's also not. I'll cite some of the literature down in the description box below, but I don't want you to get caught up in the semantics of that. What you need to understand is there are extremely high-level coaches and powerlifters out there who train one, two, three, four, five times a week on the main lifts, the muscle groups, and they all have success. There's so many different ways, and you really can't make an argument because the literature is still in its infancy that higher frequency training is any better than lower frequency training. What I actually think is optimal is mixing these and periodizing your frequency out uh, throughout a training cycle or like a large macro cycle of a yearly training plan. And that's what I want to get into today. So first let's talk about the, the benefits of higher frequency training and then we'll talk about the benefits of lower frequency training and how you can understand when there might be certain times you'd rather increase your training frequency and other times when you'd rather decrease your training frequency. The first benefit is increase in technical prowess. The more frequent we train, the more we get a practice of movement pattern. Even if volume is equated in a training week, so say we're doing the same amount of sets on squats with the same amount of reps and weight in a given training week, but we spread it out to a higher frequency, like maybe three or four times a week we squat, you get more practice on a daily basis than you do with lower frequency training where we uh, kind of combine all that volume into one or two days of uh, squatting or deadlifting or benching, whatever it is. So with higher frequency training, you get more practice under the bar. When I ran the Bulgarian method where I was squatting seven days a week, it's actually relatively really low volume. I accumulated something like about seven singles a week plus a little bit of back off volume. It's super low volume compared to most of my training programs I've ran, but I felt like I was a technical master in the squat. Like there was no squat that could scare me. Like I just felt like my technique was so on point and that's because I got under that bar so often to practice the one thing we do in powerlifting and that's doing a one rep max. I felt extremely comfortable and my technique was more locked in than ever. Um, so that's a benefit of higher frequency training. The next one is the ability for more volume and this is really what we're talking about when we just get rid of all the semantics surrounding higher frequency and lower frequency training. Uh, we're trying to increase training volume usually when we increase training frequency and this is where the debate I think gets really washy is a lot of people will try to say well is there a benefit if we just keep volume the same but generally speaking if I'm going to be increasing my training frequency on squats or bench or whatever it is I'm trying to increase my uh, total weekly volume and there are benefits and cons to that getting close to a meet I'm able to do more volume I'm going to receive a larger magnitude of adaptation that's what we know volume causes the more volume we do the more increase in, in adaptation we get the amount of adaptation we get and therefore I'll probably be able to get stronger but along with that there's some drawbacks which we'll talk about later so you can only do that for so long so higher frequency training gives you the ability for more volume sorry guys we had a little camera malfunction but picking back up where we left off the next point on higher frequency training being a plus is better volume work on primary and secondary lifts. And what I mean by this is say we're squatting, uh, we're doing two back squats a week and a front squat on a higher frequency training program and then maybe some secondary lifts. So we're squatting three times a week. If we tried to pack all that volume into the lower frequency day, um, you would find that by the time you get to front squats, maybe you have to do them right after your back squats on one of the days, you're going to be so fatigued that your movement patterns are going to be subpar and you're going to get less efficiency out of that volume that you're doing. So you're probably going to get less uh, total effective volume, even if we equate for the volume to be the exact same in the higher frequency training. So you get better volume better volume, whatever that really means, um, work on those primary and secondary lifts when we space them out a little bit. You're going to be a little bit more fresh when you get to those front squats or whatever it may be. The next point is more overall comfort in the lift. And this kind of ties into that technical prowess, but it's a little bit different. And this is especially true for the squat and the bench. And what I mean by that is oftentimes when we squat at lower frequencies or bench at lower frequencies, when we unrack that bar on our back or in our arms, feels really heavy and just kind of foreign, even if we're doing a lot of volume, it's like we have such a gap in between the time that we go to squat or bench or so many days in between that it just always kind of feels foreign on your back. But when I was squatting uh, under the Bulgarian method seven days a week, always building up to that single, 
I felt so confident and just like every squat was light. Even when I had 620 pounds on my back, when I walked it out, you could see how heavy it looked on my body. I wasn't scared. Like it just felt really comfortable. And it's a little bit different than actual technique. It's like your comfort of feeling in the lift, which could be a huge benefit for when you're transitioning into a meet or like an intensity block right before a meet. Now moving on to the benefits of lower frequency training, which are really the cons of higher frequency training. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is more time for recovery. And what I really mean by this is uh, the joints, the tendons, and ligaments, but kind of overall. Usually speaking, like I said, when we're going lower frequency in, um, in, in training, we're doing less total volume, so therefore we're actually recovering a lot more. And this could be a good tool for desensitizing yourself, which is one of the points later, which I'll talk about. But even if volume is equated for, I have found when I pack more of my volume together in lower frequencies, that my joints, my tendons, the ligaments, the connective tissues, those all hold up so much better and I feel a lot healthier. So when I get really close to a meet, sometimes I like to push higher frequency training, but when I'm far out, maybe five months out from a meet or so, and I'm in the off season, even if I'm doing a lot of volume, I just prefer lower frequency training because it just makes me feel a lot healthier. Um, everything holds up and lasts a lot longer, which anyone who's power lifted for a long time knows like staying healthy is the number one goal because that's really what ends up holding you back. So you have more time for recovery. There's also less fluctuation in acute fatigue. So this ties into the last video where I talked about acute fatigue. If you haven't seen that, go watch it. But this is kind of a weird thought to wrap your mind around. There's actually technically more acute fl uh, fluctuation, or excuse me, there's more fluctuation in acute fatigue with lower frequency training. But what I mean by that is basically you have one really hard squat session, right? Especially if volume's equated, that maybe uh, on Monday you squat and then you front squat and you do all this volume, but then you have like three or four days until your next uh, squat day if you're only squatting two times a week. Or maybe you have a whole week before you get back to those squats if you're squatting at a really low frequency one time a week. And so you have so much time to recover that you Usually by the time you get back to your next training session, you're fully recovered or very close to it and there's less fluctuation in your performance, less acute fatigue. However, with higher frequency training, if we have a squat day back to back or maybe only one day in between, you're going to see larger uh, peaks and valleys between your performances from squat day to squat day. And we can account for that in programming like I showed in the last video, but you will get less acute fatigue uh, with uh, lower frequency training. Now onto the next point, ability to reset adaptation stimulus. This one is probably the main thing that's really going to separate whether you're doing lower or higher frequency training. And this is really the one of the main things I look at when I'm changing a client's frequency from maybe they're doing higher frequency training back to, and I want to change it back down to lower frequency training. What I mean by this is basically um, at some point you have to do less to kind of reset your stimulus to training again. So we know for a fact that after you've adapted maybe over a year or two to a certain amount of volume, you're going to have to do more volume. And that's kind of going to touch on the chronic fatigue and some of the things we were talking about in the last video. But at some point, you always have to do more volume than you were doing before to see continued progress. However, there's kind of um, more acute fluctuations in this, and there's going to be times where uh, you can reset your stimulus to a certain amount of volume. So maybe right before a meet, I'm squatting uh, three times a week or so, and I'm accumulating anywhere from 15 to maybe as much as even 20 sets of squats in a week. Uh, getting a little beat up, but like my fitness is through the roof, performance is really high in the squat, everything's amazing. After that meet, we could keep trying to squat that much and then squat even a little bit more to keep pushing progress, but that's probably going to be unrealistic. You're probably going to end up injured. You're going to see uh, a lot of issues with that, and you just won't be able to do that from a time efficiency standpoint. At some, at some point, you only have so much time in the gym you can spend in there. So to get around that, we want to kind of reset our adaptation stimulus. And what I mean by that is kind of take a step back from that volume, take a step back from that frequency of training to actually decrease that technical prowess, decrease your sens uh, sensitivity to volume, and all of a sudden you do this for a little bit and you're only squatting maybe 10 sets or 8 sets a week, your body is going to get used to that after a while and you can maintain or even gain a little bit of strength here, but usually it's kind of more of a maintenance phase. And it preps you to get healthy again, the tendons and joints start feeling better. And then when you start pushing volume a little bit more and then eventually pushing frequency a little bit more, you can then start making some more gains. You have reset your stimulate or excuse me, your um, stimulus to the adaptation you were trying to achieve. And that is really huge. So usually speaking before me, 
I'm really pushing frequency, especially on squats and bench. Deadlifts, that's a video for another time. I usually don't deadlift more than twice a week with clients, but squats, bench, I might do three, even four times a week before a meet. However, after that, to kind of give them a break, make sure they stay injury free and all that stuff, I reset their, stimu <clears throat> their stimulus to that adaptation and pull back. And that's one of the main things you can really get out of lower frequency training. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is more freedom for accessory work and healthy stuff. And this is really big, and I think a lot of people are going to want to kind of roll their eyes at this point. But this is huge. When we squat three times a week, we know that like getting your, all your SPD sleeves on, your squat shoes, warming up for squats, all that just takes a lot of mental energy, a ton of time, and it's just really consuming. As where if we're squatting only once or twice a week or whatever it may be, we have a lot more time to do stuff after uh, or on separate days where we don't have any squats or bench or deadlifts or whatever it is at all, we have some time to do our accessory works that we're missing during the week. Do some more healthy stuff like mobility, stability work, like whatever it may be, you just have more time to focus on other things. And that again ties into that time maybe after a meet where we really want to get healthy, moving well again, and focus on some of the like, like building muscle, doing a lot more accessory work. That's where lower frequency is going to really shine through. Now, to finish this video off because it's getting long, I really don't want to draw like um, kind of two paradigms of like higher frequency and lower frequency and say at this time higher is way better and this time lower is way better. I'm kind of showing the examples of before and after a meet, but there's some people who just do better on lower frequency training. Right now, I'm one of them. I'm not squatting more than twice a week and I'm going to keep it there because I'm just getting to the point in my training age where I'm squatting in the fives and sixes regularly that my body's feeling so beat up that I just do better with the lower frequency training. A lot of my clients are the opposite. Uh, even some guys as advanced as me, they just have different anatomy, different uh, genetics. They can withstand higher frequency training, and I kind of have them on maybe three times a week squats year round or close to it. Um, there's a different, there's a ton of different ways to do this stuff. I'm just giving you guys theory so you can learn how to apply this to your programming, to your training, and figure out what's best for you. There is no black and white answer ever. You have to understand the, the basis of knowledge and then apply it to whatever your ind uh, independent situation is. All right, guys, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.